Hi and welcome. I'm Michelle Anderson, founder of Clarinet Mentors. Today's video is actually part two of a two-part series on four different techniques you can use to help reduce the effects of nervousness and performance anxiety when you play clarinet. If you haven't watched part one yet, I recommend you do that first. I put the link in the write-up just underneath this video. If you have, let's continue on with technique number three. Pointer number three is fairly simple. It doesn't necessarily apply to everyone, but you might not know if it applies to you or not until you try it out. One of the symptoms of being nervous is that we often have an unrealistic sense of how time is passing. You know, a good example of that is someone's in a car accident or something where the whole action happens in two or three seconds. But as they describe it, they say it's as if the world went into slow motion and their experience of it is several seconds, even though it actually happened really quickly. Well, performing and being nervous is not quite a car wreck, but nonetheless, it changes our perception of time. So this technique is effective if you're playing somewhere where you're in control of your tempo. If you're playing with a conductor, they're going to be keeping you on track with it, but if you're doing an audition where you're playing an excerpt by yourself or you're playing a solo piece maybe with a piano accompanist, um, what you may not realize is that when you're nervous and when your nerves are pumping in, you're actually going way faster than you believe you are. And um, here's the symptoms that you might be one of these people, is that if you're playing a fast technical passage and all of a sudden you start making funny finger slips where you've never slipped up before many times. Now it's kind of normal to expect that in a performance you might have the odd we weird technical glitch sort of come out of left field that you've never experienced before. I just maybe chalk that up to nerves. But many of them happen where you usually don't make mistakes. Sometimes that's nothing more than the fact that you're going way faster than you're used to playing it. And of course we would screw up under those circumstances but you have no awareness that you're doing it. So if that seems to be a pattern for you, that when you're doing your test or your exam or your audition, you start making all these technical mistakes that you don't expect, you may be someone who's going way faster than you realize. The way that I became aware of this for myself was um, I did a professional audition that I was quite nervous for, and I recorded myself while I was doing it. I just put a little recorder in there and recorded the whole thing. And again, there was a piece that I knew really well. And I'd gone through all these different techniques and I messed up in a way that I wasn't expecting to. When I listened to the recording, I was stunned at how fast I had been going. I had no concept that I was that fast and it was like, no wonder I screwed up. So for me, knowing this about myself, my third technique is if I'm in control of the tempo and it's something fast and it's hard, I consciously will go slower than I think it should go. And my guess is then I'm actually going normal speed or maybe just a little faster than normal, but I'm not going to let my weird, untrustworthy sense of time mess up my performance. So this doesn't apply to everyone, but it applies to many, many people. Finally, my fourth pointer today for how we can help deal with um, how nerves and performance anxiety get in the way of our performance. It's kind of a basic one. We need to practice a whole bunch before our performance. And um, what we want is we want to know a piece so well that we can almost play it on autopilot. If you've seen my video on lizard brain, I think it's in the five best practice habits, there's part of our brain that kind of memorizes physical movement. And you all use this in your music. It's what lets us see a rhythm like four quarter notes on a page and we just play ta 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 ta. We don't think about it anymore. Although at one point, you had to think about what one beat per note means and you had to consciously learn it. Now Lizard Brain takes care of that for you. When we know a piece really, really, really well, there's a lot of power in having that automatic autopilot part of our brain help take over. And I know for myself, especially if I'm doing maybe a big solo performance, um, if I'm nervous, I've had that experience of I'm playing and just for a moment I kind of don't know where I am in the music and I, I, consciously I might be like, oh no, what am I doing? And I notice that I've still been playing and it's been fine and then I regroup and I catch myself and it's great. You've probably had that experience driving a car. You're driving home and you're thinking and you might get lost in a little bit of a trance and all of a sudden you realize you've just gone a few blocks without really thinking about what you're doing. Well, autopilot part of your brain 
was, you know, scanning for stop signs and this and that and other traffic, and it kind of took over for you. Not that you should ever drive unconsciously. I'm not advocating that. But it's an example of how sometimes when we're nervous, there's conscious babble in our brain. And you know what it is. Oh, I hope I don't screw up. Oh, I hope they don't hate me. Oh, blah, 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 blah. That that can get in the way of our performance. Being around the background, lizard brain is just like, do, 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 do. I've played this before. So that's always, first and foremost, be really, really prepared. Know your music super well. Now, many people who do know their music really well still find they have challenges, and that's where the first three pointers on this video might really help you out. So I'd love to hear what works for you. And as I said, I just scratched the surface on these. These are techniques that many people have studied and written great books about that you could find, but I'm tossing them out there for you to introduce you to them. And I hope you try them out, and I'd love to hear the results that you get. So put your comments below. And finally, if you are a clarinetist, and you'd love to get some pointers from me on how to play the clarinet more easily, I invite you to join the Clarinet Mentors community. It's totally free. You can go to www.learnclarinetnow.com. There's a link underneath this video. And simply um, put in your name and email address. Every two weeks I send out a newsletter that has a video like the one you're watching today. I look forward to seeing you on the next video.